Most lenders will let you borrow four and a half times your income on a mortgage application, depending on your credit commitments. Some lenders will let you borrow up to five times your income if you're on a higher income. Today, we're going to be talking about something very exciting for first-time buyers. We are going to be talking about a lender that will let you borrow up to five and a half times your income as a first-time buyer. Hello, welcome back to our channel and podcast. My name's Gemma and here at WIS we talk about all things relating to money, mortgages and positive money mindset. So if that interests you, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the thumbs up. It really helps with our YouTube algorithm and means that you won't miss out on any of our videos. On today's episode of Let's Talk Money and Mortgages, we have Ifti joining us once again. And for those of you who don't know Ifti, Ifti is a trained accountant and mortgage advisor who has been in the industry for over 10 years and he's also one of the founding directors here at WIS. Welcome back, Ifti. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. How are you, Gemma? Yeah, very good, thank you. I'm getting excited because it's getting closer to Christmas and I'm thinking about putting my Christmas decorations up. (laughs) Yeah, I know it's that time of the year, isn't it? I hear that lights are coming up as well, so yeah. Very soon, I have to do that myself. Yeah. All right, well, today we're not talking about Christmas, sadly. We are talking about income at five and a half times for first-time buyers. So I think everyone's going to be quite happy to know this. So tell us what the scheme's about. Yeah, I mean, it's an exciting scheme. It's a bit like Christmas for some people, for sure, right? Because if you go (laughs) to lenders, yeah, most lenders, like you mentioned, they will give you four and a half times your income. But there is a lender who's the first-time buyers. They've come up with a scheme which will allow them to borrow up to five and a half times their income, which is really good news. The scheme is obviously open only for first-time buyers and very strictly for first-time buyers. I know I've worked with a lot of people out there, first-time buyers. Quite often they want to buy that additional house, right? Or, you know, from a flat they want to buy a house, but they just can't stretch that last bit, right? And this scheme will definitely help them. But there is some conditions attached to that, right? An applicant has to earn at least 31,000 or if it is a joint application, they have to earn about 50,000 minimum. But still, it's a good scheme because most of the time, there are lenders who give you up to five times your income. But for that, you have to earn a certain amount of money, like 75,000 or 100,000 if it's a joint application, depending on the bank. But this scheme is much more flexible and I think it's welcome news for first time buyers for sure. Yeah, okay. So you have to be earning over 31,000 if you're a sole applicant or yeah. 50,000 as a joint applicant. So then what do you then need to do to actually qualify for that? Is that yeah. just the salary on its own or? Yeah, okay. So you have to be very careful here because to qualify for the scheme, this is not open for the self-employed at the moment or if you're a contractor. So you have to be employed. We don't know the reason, but probably because of COVID, a lot of self-employed were affected. So maybe that's why it's open, self-employed at the moment. But it is only for employed banks that it's open. Also to qualify, you will have to run a credit search, right? Because this particular lender is quite particular that you run a credit search because everybody will not qualify for this. So to qualify, they look at your credit commitments as well. And if you qualify, they will give you both options, right? But a lot of people have qualified, so it's not very stringent. Mm. But you need to have a very decent credit score, that's for sure, right? So subject to that, I think you should qualify. Okay, so also about uh, deposits, do they specify what kind of deposit size yeah. you need? Again, it's 10% for the standard scheme. What I mean by the standard scheme is if you're buying a house, it's 10%, right? But if you are buying an apartment, that becomes 15%. So that's something that you need to be mindful of. Uh, But this doesn't work the same with new bills. If you are buying a new bill, a new bill house is 15% deposit. And if you're buying a new build apartment, it's 25% deposit. But it's not unusual for new bills anyway to put down 15% deposit. So that's how the scheme has been designed. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like maybe they're they're taking into consideration that sometimes new builds are slightly on the pricier side, so you have to kind of pay a bit of a higher deposit for it. Also, I think there's one thing to be mindful of. This scheme is not open for things like how to buy. It is only for standard property purchases, right? So you have to be a little mindful of that because you can't combine how to buy and the scheme, right? Where you get, you know, 25% from the government. It doesn't work, right? So it has to be for standard purchase. Okay, okay then. So then what would you say uh, are the pros to this 
scheme. Yeah, the biggest throw is obviously, like, you know, you got five and a half times, right? Because say, for example, somebody's earning 50,000. I'm just taking this with you through the calculations. If you go to a standard vendor or if you use under the old scheme, you get, you know, four and a half times your income, right? At best, you know, you're talking of 225,000 max mortgage, right? Now that number with five and a half times becomes 275,000, right? So which means you can borrow 50,000 more. So if you're buying a flat, right? Now, instead of buying a flat, you can potentially move to buying a new house instead. So that is definitely an advantage, right? Because that's where I find people they say, well, we want to buy a house, but you know, it's just that the numbers don't work out, right? So for people like that, it's definitely an advantage, right? Also, if you take as an advantage, you get five-year deals on this one. Generally, if you take a five-year deal, it's kind of locked for the next five years. So you're kind of guaranteed that your rate will be that for the next five years. And obviously, there's a 10-year scheme as well, right? So if you want to lock for a longer period of time, oh, people yeah. like that, it's definitely an advantage. Yeah, because I guess then it gives people time for their salaries to perhaps increase so that when they remortgage, yeah. it's doable, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I imagine this might be good for somebody who's managed to save a good deposit, but they just don't quite earn enough then. That's the kind of person this is for, right? Uh, yes, that's right. So it will definitely help them because uh, some people do have a deposit, but unfortunately, you know, the income articles doesn't work, right? especially if you come close to London, house prices go up in price, right? So they struggle to make that income multiple work, right? So for people like that, it's definitely an uh, option for them. Okay, but there's always some cons, so let's talk about the cons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so with cons, obviously with this scheme, you can only have a 5-year or a 10-year mortgage, right? Now that kind of restricts people because obviously with deals like that, there are early redemption charges and things like that if you want to break a mortgage, right? So that can be a bit of a problem. So, you know, that's a bigger problem you have. So you are stuck for five years or 10 years with the deal, right? Another problem is this is only available with one lender, right? So obviously if that lender works for you, great. But if not, you don't have another option, right? Because obviously most other lenders will give you four and a half times your income. If you're really lucky, you get five times your income. Also, another disadvantage is, you know, if somebody is earning less than 31,000, right? For them, it is not an option, right? So it is, uh, can, can be a disadvantage. Okay, so any other tips, Ifti, for somebody who's thinking about using this scheme? Okay, this scheme is quite good because they give you a 500 pounds cash back as well if you're using it, uh, because this lender generally likes to say thank you for using their mortgages. Also, there are, of course, this gives you five and a half times your income, but there are also other schemes out there you might want to compare, right? So, for example, like I said, you can't mix and match some of these things. You can't combine this with help to buy, for example. But help to buy is a scheme yeah. out there for, for standbys, right? So that might be an option for you to consider as well. So there are schemes out there. Sometimes you can make it work with five times your income and you may get better rates out there as well because obviously with this particular lender, they have decent rates for sure. But whatever the rate they have is the rate you need to get, right? But whereas there may be lenders who give five times your income, but their rate might be lower. So your mortgage interest rate plus product fees may be lower, right? So there are other options that you can consider, right? So don't look at it in isolation is what I'm trying to say here, because you have to look at the whole picture. So that's what makes a difference. And are we going to tell people who this lender is? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, this uh, lender is called Nationwide. It's a big <laughs> society. Uh, it's a big building society as well, right? So, you know, they're the ones who are offering uh, this product. Obviously, uh, you can speak to Nationwide directly if you're interested. Of course, you can speak to a broker. Like I said, if you come to someone like us, we will look at the wider picture and see whether this is the most suitable product for you because we consider a lot of other options. Uh, we look at things like, uh, you know, the interest rates and whether this is the best thing for you looking at your circumstances, right? Because this may not work well for you if you're trying to move in maybe two years or so, right? So it may not work well for you. So we will look at the whole picture before we make the recommendation. Yeah, we can compare other mortgages and rates and just work out yeah. like, oh, you know, ultimately what might be better. Yeah. All right, well, thanks again, Ifti, yeah. for some more great advice. 
I just wanted to put a reminder out there that these points may or may not be applicable to everybody. So if you're unsure if they're suitable for you, please do talk to an advisor. And if you don't have an advisor, I will leave our WS contact details below as we're always happy to help. A little reminder again that a mortgage is secured against your house or property, so it may be repossessed if you do not keep up with the mortgage repayments. Thank you again for joining us today. We'll be back next week with another episode of Let's Talk Money and Mortgages. Have a great day, stay safe, and see you again soon.